How does one of the most successful Android manufacturers follow up one of the most popular Android smartphones of all time? In grandiose fashion, of course, as we learned from Samsung's display at the Radio City Music Hall event in March. But since we've had a chance to get our hands on the fourth generation of the Galaxy S brand, it's time to give it the all-important review treatment. I'm Taylor Martin, this is Pocket Now, and this is our full review of the AT&T Samsung Galaxy S4. Those expecting a major upgrade in design and hardware were sorely disappointed when Samsung announced the Galaxy S4 in March. It bears the all too familiar design and build we've come to expect from Samsung, and externally, very little has changed between the third and fourth generation Galaxy S devices. Some may consider this upgrade uninspired, while others applaud Samsung for focusing its efforts on other, more important aspects of the phone. The phone itself looks great more mature and refined than last year's model. While packing some serious specification improvements, Samsung managed to make the Galaxy S4 lighter and slimmer in almost every dimension, even despite the larger display. That alone should warrant some applause. In the hand, it feels decent, but insubstantial. At only 130 grams, it feels somewhat hollow and almost too light, as if it's a mid-range smartphone rather than a truly premium smartphone. If you are turned off or unmoved from the hardware of the Galaxy S3, it's unlikely that the Galaxy S4 will strike you any differently. It's still the same ultra-slick, lightweight plastic, only with a slightly more squared shape. But what the Galaxy S4 lacks in truly inspired hardware or design, it more than makes up for it in specifications. The front panel is a 5-inch 1080p Super AMOLED display that's easily among the best in its class. It's bright, vibrant, and offers relatively wide viewing angles. This display also features the inkiest blacks you'll find on a smartphone today. Other specifications include a 1.9 GHz quad-core Snapdragon 600 chipset, 2 GB of RAM, 16, 32, or 64 GB of built-in storage with the option to expand up to an additional 64 GB with a microSD card, a 13 megapixel primary camera around back, 2 megapixel front-facing camera, and LTE connectivity. Along the top edge is an IR blaster for use as a universal remote, and it comes with the standard connections, NFC, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi BGN. Keeping the show running is a removable 2600mAh battery. If you are coming from a Galaxy S3 or even a Galaxy Note 2, the software on the Galaxy S4 will make you feel right at home, but it won't take long to begin noticing some changes and improvements. For instance, the notification shade has been updated with a host of new toggles as well as a quick settings page accessed by a two-finger swipe down from the top of the display, a la Jelly Bean. The lock screen now also incorporates widgets, thanks to Android 4.2.2. But not all the new software features are unique to Jelly Bean. In fact, the vast majority of the new software is Samsung's own handiwork. Building on the impressive features introduced with the Galaxy S3, such as Smart Stay, the Galaxy S4 comes with a horde of motion and gesture controls. Using Air Gesture, you can swipe through pictures in the gallery app or scroll in web pages without ever physically touching the phone. Hovering your finger over an album in gallery or over a text conversation will preview the content, not unlike AirView with the S Pen on the Note series. And not only does the display stay on as long as you're looking at it or maintain orientation based on the orientation of your head, but now local videos can pause when you look away, and tilting your head in the web browser will scroll the page. It's not that all these new features are bad, so to speak. It's that not all of them work as desired. For instance, with the quick glance feature enabled, the display will automatically turn on at times you don't intend to peek at your phone. Many of the features are half-baked and only work in a small set of specific scenarios. Outside the typical use case, some features cause more frustration than anything else. Fortunately, all these new features can be disabled in the Settings app, provided you can locate them in the new convoluted and tabbed layout. Many of these new features came at the expense of a principal TouchWiz was once built upon, simplicity, or a simplified user experience. Of late, it seems Samsung has thrown simple user experience to the wind in favor of every haphazard yet sort of cool and marketable feature it can conjure up. Surprisingly, the 1.9 GHz quad-core Crate 300 CPU paired with the Adreno 320 GPU isn't enough to keep the Galaxy S4 purring smoothly all the time. Randomly, throughout our testing period, we were met with various instances of lag. On top of that, the excessive animations don't help put any pep in the S4's step, either. 
Still, the Galaxy S4 had no trouble cutting through synthetic benchmarks like a hot knife through butter. The network performance on the S4 was mostly great in the Charlotte metro area. We were able to maintain strong coverage in most areas and data speeds reflected just that, topping off at around 30 megabits per second down and hitting up to 17 megabits per second up. Where the Galaxy S4 suffers, however, is call quality. The earpiece speaker performs quite well, but in several instances, callers on the other end had trouble hearing us in quiet areas with a strong signal. We found battery life to be surprisingly great on the AT&T variant of the Galaxy S4, managing about a day and a half of light to moderate usage. In spurts of heavy usage, especially with the brightness cranked up, the battery did seem to drain rather quickly, but the standby time balanced out well with the usage time. Finally, the Galaxy S4's camera, although upgraded to a 13 megapixel sensor, is mostly hit or miss. On the software side, there's no shortage of features. There's a scene dedicated to virtually every possible scenario, and oodles of different shooting modes. But the output of the camera is not always so praiseworthy. In absolute perfect lighting, the S4 manages to capture some great shots. Colors are vibrant, details and sharpness are great, and images are pretty well balanced. But the instant lighting becomes an issue, images are littered with noise and artifacts, more so than normal. To be concise, in anything but great lighting, the Galaxy S4's camera is... muddy. In all, the Galaxy S4 is a fair upgrade from last year's model. The hardware is better, the specifications are improved, the software has tons and tons of new features, and it's all neatly packed into a smaller chassis. But Samsung did cut some corners to reach its final destination. Not all the software features are ready for prime time, and many come at the expense of user-friendliness. Despite the few negatives, the Samsung Galaxy S4 is almost certain to become an instant classic, and it will suit everything from basic users to the most dedicated power users sufficiently. We give the AT&T Galaxy S4 an 8.2 out of 10. That's going to wrap up this review, so if you found it helpful and enjoyed it, be sure to give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button below. And follow us in all the usual places, Twitter, Google+, and Facebook at Pocket Now. You can find me on Twitter at Casper Tech. I'm Taylor Martin, and I'll see you soon.